I just was intrigued by the title. Tucker, why is the United States doing this? And considering Ukraine and China and all these kind of things, like I, I, I think we should all just be, just grip the sides of your chair and be prepared for Tucker Carlson to just take a giant shit on his home country. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. No one is welcome at Tucker Carlson, unless you're, I suppose, uh, yeah. Something all of us need to begin to internalize. Just because something seems far-fetched or it seems crazy or it seems totally destructive to core American interests doesn't mean the U.S. government won't do it. That's the main lesson of the moment we're living in. Oh, I see. So the lesson is, is... Uh crazy conspiracy idea about something is bad for America, but the United States is going to do it anyways. And by United States, he means all of us together collectively. So with that in mind, do not discount, no matter how far-fetched it may seem, a hot war with Russia. Oh, I see. A hot war with Russia. I see. This is, this is Tucker Carlson is here to warn us that we might be picking a fight with Russia uh, in, 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 and that's you know, and it's our fault if it starts. If they invade Ukraine, hey, that's kind of their territory anyways. Well, who cares if they've been using sniper rifles to murder Ukrainians for years and we've been looking the other way, hoping that they eventually allow Ukraine to live in as its own country? Who cares about the Holdemore? Who cares about the Ukrainian genocide that Russia put forward? I mean, it's none of our business. Yes, that is a lunatic idea. Yes, and you were a lunatic, and and but hey, you got to make news somehow. There's nothing we could possibly gain from a military confrontation with Vladimir Putin, and there's very much we could lose, including, of course, many thousands of American lives. Right. So why are we even doing this? I mean, it's not like we give a fuck about the Ukrainians. I mean, what if Russia encroaches more on Europe and 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 it makes their way past NATO lines? Do I mean, honestly, is it our is that our problem really? If they just gain more ground and more resources, and then this kleptocrat uh, and his uh, mafia buddies uh, who already have nuclear weapons join forces with, say, I don't know, North Korea and decide to destroy the whole world in the name of. Uh, their own personal anger. Who cares? But that doesn't mean Joe Biden won't do it. Well, that's true. I mean, he's a he, he's obviously uh, gunning for murder since day one. <laughs> By the way, uh, during the whole little rocket man thing with North Korea, uh, Tucker Carlson was giddy. Biden is unpopular. He's incompetent, and he's desperate. He's unco he is unpopular and incompetent. Um, Joe Biden won't do it. Mm. Biden is unpopular. He's un. Competent and he's is un uncompetent, unlike Trump, who's incontinent, which is I you get those mixed up and you have to forgive Tucker Carlson because it's not like he talks for a living. You know, it's a it's not that his job requires public speaking. Un uncompetent. Uncompetent. Non non-competent. You're not gonna desperate. But more than anything, Joe Biden is weak. He is a pawn of his staff and the hard-eyed ideologues who surround him. Hard-eyed, hard-eyed ideologues. Hard ideologues? Hard-eyed, hard the hard, the high, what? The Hyde Amendment ideologues? <laughs> Russia is currently involved in a border dispute with neighboring Ukraine. Yeah, guys, it's a dispute. It's kind of like a, it's like a civil trial over, you know, a neighbor's fence that involves snipers. Biden's closest aides are pushing the United States to get involved militarily. Now, among the many... And by the way, his closest aides, he means the entirety of the Pentagon because they're aware of the threat posed by Russia reclaiming Ukraine. Many ironies here is that the Ukraine crisis was... Ukraine? It is hard to say. Now, among the many, many... I no mung, no, no mung, no mung, the many, no mung the many in the United States to get involved militarily. Mm -hmm. Now, among the many, many ironies here... No, among the many, many ironies. That's, I mean, hold on. Not that, that, you know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to say it, might as well do the no, among the many, many. No, among the many, many ironies. that a bunch of things to do. Now, among the many, many do. And non-competent fool. Is that the Ukraine crisis was... Ukraine. I have a friend who choked on a popsicle trying to say Ukraine. No joke. 
actually created by Joe Biden's own aides and many people like them throughout all levels of the U.S. government. They do like them. They like them very much. I like them. They seem like nice folks. So here's the Russian position. For Russia, the core question- Okay, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, enough about America. Tell us, if you would, uh, Tucker, is it? T Tucker, Tucker, really? You, your parents just saw a failed car and went, Matt, pretty much, pretty much sums him up. Is NATO. NATO is the post-war military alliance created in 1949 to keep the Soviets from invading Western Europe, and it worked pretty well. Somebody's discovered Wikipedia. Well, for about 40 years. But the Soviet Union has not existed in more than three decades. It's part of history now. And right. Now, now the Soviet Union is gone, and now we just have a Russian mafia state with nukes and no ideology at all except whatever they can grab. Yeah, it's way better, way, way better. NATO very much lives on, better funded than ever. It is an army without a purpose. Well, better funded because it wasn't it Trump who said he got them to pour more money into it. I thought he was supposed to dismantle it because it wasn't necessary and his buddies in Russia didn't like it. So at this point, NATO exists primarily to torment Vladimir Putin who- <laughs> I see, poor, poor Vlad. Aw, aw. That's terrible. Who would do such a thing? Tormenting Vladimir Putin. This poor fella. I mean, all he's trying to do is, is spray poison in the faces of, of dissenters and lock up his opposition and maintain control uh, of Russia till 2036 um, while murdering anybody in his cabinet who he thinks is a spy by literally throwing a bag over their head and having them dragged out of the room. And who gives a shit if he, his, his own country that he runs pays him 140,000 US in salary every year as the leader of the country, and yet he's worth $200 billion. It's the torment. Thank you, Tucker Carlson. Thank you for defending Vladimir Putin. Thank you for defending the, the clearest and most distinct enemy of democracy in the Western world. For his many faults, has no intention of invading Western Europe. Oh, I'm sorry. Did he tell you that right before he tapped the top of your head to let you know that he was, I'm not gonna say it. Vladimir Putin does not want Belgium. He just wants to keep his Western border secure. Oh, I see. Fuck, who, by the way, who wants Belgium? I, I mean, see, I mean, I like waffles as ne as much as the next person, but you can get one of those makers at, at Bed Bath & Beyond now. And the problem with like learning French and Finnish is you never know when you're done. <laughs> Why he doesn't want Ukraine to join NATO. And that makes sense. I'm yeah, it makes sense if your goal is to expand uh, towards Europe over time by murdering Ukrainians, seizing territory, and of course, uh, the many gas wells they've dug uh, since uh, since Hunter Biden turned around the biggest gas company in there and made it no longer the most corrupt gas company. No, you don't. You don't give a shit about that. Okay. Now we would feel if Mexico and Canada became satellites of China, we would. <laughs> um. If Mexico and Canada became satellites of China, how would we feel? Well, um, we, we, we'd probably be concerned that they were having less rights and we would push back against that. Um, I think it's more, the a better example would be how would we feel if Mexico and China became satellites, uh, or sorry, Mexico and, and Canada become, were, were satellites of China already, and we believed that they should have more freedom, we secured more freedom, and then it was, and then China was trying to take them back from, not from us, but from the people who fucking live there by shooting them in the head from a quarter mile away. Like that at all. In Russia's case, this is an existential question. A NATO takeover of Ukraine would compromise Russia's access to its Sebastopol naval base. That's oh no! 
That's terrible. If NATO is in, and and by the way, NATO is going to be in Ukraine in uh, in um, two decades, maybe. But they can't get to they can't get to their base. Oh no! Oh no! Not that that, that could happen. Of the Russian Black Sea Fleet and one of the country's only oh. connections to international waters. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, and we know how Russian trucks run for shit. In the words of Russia scholar Richard Sakwa, if Russia lost the Sevastopol naval base, it would be, quote, the biggest military geopolitical defeat of Russia in the last thousand years. Huh. Except for the whole collapse of the Soviet Union and, and uh, 40 million of their people being lost in a Stalinist war with <coughs> the Germans and murdering them themselves. Hey, uh, if Russia, hey, uh, can I, hold on. This is, I don't know, maybe people don't know this. Maybe Tucker's just counting on this. Where's a good one? There you go. Um, now, I don't know how you might feel about uh, the the Ukraine there, uh, Tucker, but, um, hi, History Channel, thanks. How Joseph Stalin starved millions in the Ukrainian famine. At the height of the 1932-33 Ukrainian famine, the height of it, because it's, you know, a multi-year famine. Under Joseph Stalin, starving people roamed the countryside, desperate for something, anything to eat. In the village of Savich, a young peasant boy watched as the wandering dug into empty gardens with their bare hands. Many were so emaciated, he recalled, that their bodies began to swell and stink from the extreme lack of nutrients. You could see them walking about, just walking and walking, and one would drop, and then another, and so on it went, he said many years later. In a case history collected in the late 1980s by a congressional commission, in the cemetery outside the village hospital, overwhelmed doctors carried the bodies on stretchers and tossed them into an enormous pit. The Ukrainian famine, known as the Holodomor, which uh, is where Voldemort from uh, Harry Potter gets his name, I think, a combination of the Ukrainian words for starvation and to inflict death, by one estimate, claimed the lives of 3.9 million people, about 1.3% of the population. And unlike other famines in history caused by blight or drought, this was caused when a dictator wanted both to replace Ukraine's small farms with state-run collectives and punish independence-minded Ukrainians who posed a threat to his totalitarian authority. The Ukrainian famine was a clear case of man-made famine. Um... The, let's see, he describes it as a hybrid of a famine caused by calamitous social economic policies and one aimed at a particular population for repression or punishment. In those days, Ukraine, a Texas-sized nation about uh, along the Black Sea in the west of Russia, was a part of the Soviet Union, then ruled by Stalin. In 1929, as part of his plan to rapidly create a totally communist economy, Stalin had imposed collectivization, which replaced individually owned and operated farms with big state-run collectives. Ukraine's small, mostly subsistence farmers resisted giving up their land and their livelihoods. Uh, resistance farmers la labeled as kulaks. Uh, in response, the Soviet regime derided the resistors as kulaks, well-to-do peasants, who in Soviet ideology were considered enemies of the state. Soviet officials drove these peasants off their farms by forest and Stalin's secret police further made plans to deport 50,000 Ukrainian farm families to Siberia. 50,000 families. To Siberia, historian Ann Applebaum writes in her book, Red Famine, Stalin's War on Ukraine. Stalin appears to have been motivated by the goal of... Tran I'm just saying the Ukrainians might have a reason to distrust how Russia might use their land once they seize it. I don't know where they would get that idea, Tucker. Collectivization in Ukraine didn't go very well, and by the fall of 1932, around the time of Stalin's wife, Nadia Chagija Elviev, who reportedly objected to his collectivization policy, committed suicide, it became apparent that Ukraine's grain harvest was going to miss Soviet planters' target by 60%. There still might have been enough food for Ukrainian peasants to get by, but as Applebaum writes, Stalin then ordered what little they had be confiscated as punishment for not meeting quotas. 
can't imagine why the Ukrainians would be a little antsy about the idea that Russia might seize their land again. So for Vladimir Putin, that's unacceptable. It's a disaster. Oh, it's, oh no. Oh, it's for, oh, for Vladimir. It's all. Oh, that's terrible. Um, well, Tucker, um, from me and my chat to you and to Putin, fuck him. I don't care. He's a murderer. If they want a good relationship with Ukraine where they can have passage to get to their military base and stuff, they always could eject Putin and allow someone genuinely decent to be elected as ruler of the Russian people or as leader of the Russian people, depending on how the, whatever the word in Russian they want to use is. And then they could have a relationship with Ukraine that's like a borrowing a, a trade route like we did with Pakistan and other countries when we were in Afghanistan and shit like that. Otherwise, fuck you and fuck him. And why should we care? And why do you want us to care? Asshole. He cannot let it happen. He will not let it happen. Oh, did he tell you this before he... Sorry. But for the United States, and this is the main point here. They... Uh huh. The main point here. You know, benefit either. Mm. The United States would gain precisely nothing from taking over Ukraine. Why would we want to do that? We're not taking over Ukraine. We have no plans to take over Ukraine. NATO has no plans to take over Ukraine. As a matter of fact, we are protecting the sovereignty of Ukraine. And Russia is the only entity that, quote, wants to take over Ukraine. You dizzy fuck. At best, we'd be driving Russia, and we are, in fact, deeper into the arms of the government of China. <laughs> oh, boy. I see. This is aimed at people who can't read. May I, um... Now, we've gone into my feelings about the current Chinese regime and, and the validity of their stake and whatever. Uh, but... And I showed you guys... Let's see, images. Showed you guys these pictures of... Uh, Vlad, um, Modi and China are, uh, and she are at odds on a big level right now. The, the, the Chinese and the Indians are beating the living fuck out of each other in, un, uh, I guess, in demilitarized zones. Technically, they're militarized, but they don't have arms in those areas. Um, Indian soldiers, like, are, like I said, are using tridents to slash open the bellies of Chinese soldiers because they don't have guns. No guns are allowed in the area. So there's these just, and they're clubbing each other. To, it's fucked up. And China and Russia, Russia just fired on Chinese boats stealing from their fishing waters into the arms of China. Get fucked, you clown. And that would be a disaster for the United States and a, and a disaster for China and a disaster for Pakistan and a disaster for India and a disaster for Russia. And they could just all join each other in a human centipede circle jerk of criminality and warmongering, which wouldn't bother Europe, Africa, South America, and the Americas at all. For the world. So why are we doing this? Why is the U.S. Why? government... Yeah, why are we doing, why are we invading Ukraine? In Ukraine to join NATO. Well, God knows why. But um, we aren't. Government pushing Ukraine to join NATO. Why is the U.S., you, hold on. Is there, there's got to be, he's, uh, okay. U U.S. pushes Ukraine, join NATO. Like, I don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, that sounds like a push to me. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's, I wouldn't call it a shove. My, like, hey, I'm not committing, but I think, I don't know, maybe you ought to go inside. Uh huh. I'm not pushing you. I'm just like, hey, <laughs> fucking hell. What a dipshit. 
Ukraine wants to join NATO. Letting it in would just provoke Russia. This is the Washington Post. Ad- admitting a former part of USSR is a bridge too far and it won't weaken uh, and it would weaken the alliance. This is uh, Michael O'Hanlon, a senior fellow and director of research at the Brookings Institute Foreign Policy Program. He's the author of The Art of War in the Age of Peace, U.S. Grand Strategy and Resolute Restraint. He's a he's basically a uh, an anti he's, he's like an isolationist, essentially. Um Biden shouldn't let them do it. They want to. Uh, Putin and West spar over NATO's military ties to Ukraine. Tensions over Ukraine escalated as Russia later demanded legal guarantees the Western military alliance would not expand to the East, a position NATO regards as untenable. Yeah, look at that. Look at this guy. I had no idea he lived inside a cake. <laughs> Did you guys know that? This, and... It, and I, I wish I understood Russia, Russian simply because the uh, I, I would understand the lyrics to the song he's singing in this. And then they open the doors and he, Putin comes out like that and he tears off his shirt. I'm the joy of the Jedish and listen by the face that hook and dice and there the smiths the see the flesh. And then he jumps down and they, of course, he did the little uh, leg flap Russian dance, but they, that's CG. He just didn't have it anymore. I don't buy it. <laughs> it does. It looks like a Mel Brooks dance number. <laughs> yeah, Biden must be shaking in his fucking boots. <laughs> this is the day we all found out that Putin lives in a wind-up clock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You know what'll make you look legit? Giant gold doors. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh God, that's awesome. <laughs> what kind of oh <laughs> Both of those guys are nine years old. I'm just saying. <laughs> that podium is from a dollhouse. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Does he sit on the little... T- Who's on either side of him? Do these guys sit in the little chairs on either side of him? And he sits under the big turd eagle? What's happened? There's a giant brown eagle on the wall in the... Oh, God. Hey! (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Shit. The threat on our western borders is indeed rising, as we have said multiple times, President Vladimir V. Putin of Russia told ambassadors at the Kremlin on Wednesday. But he told it in the traditional Russian song. The threat on our western borders indeed is rising. We called you many times, you don't seem to listen. All right, everyone. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh god that's just gonna make me laugh every time I have to save a picture of that shit hold on <laughs> shit I need, to t- <laughs> I need to take a still of it oh god I'm, gonna- <laughs> I'm just gonna anytime I need a good laugh I need to bring this picture up <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Springtime for Putin and Tucker Carlson. Hitler. All right. (laughs) Well, God knows why. But we are doing this. Both parties are doing this. No, they're not. No one is. No, they're not. Not even close. Fuck you. What are you talking about? Not happening. Us protecting Ukraine from a Russian invasion is not us forcing them into NATO. We're just not... 
letting Putin dictate who we make alliances with, why the fuck would we? We're the United States of America, you dipshit. Take that flag down if you're going to wipe your dick on it. Neocons around Joe Biden are for it, of course, as they are. The neocons around Joe Biden. Yeah, Ron Klain and uh, <laughs> the squad. Just neocons as far every as... Every sinister dip. and stupid idea. But so is for... Every sinister and stupid idea. Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, a smart man. So is Ohio Senator Rob Portman. So are many Republicans. So this By is- By the way, uh, only Republicans, I think, in this situation. But uh, for the record, not Ron Johnson, not Chuck Grassley, not any of the assholes who went to Russia for the 4th of July in 2018. None of them wanted- sort of insanity. The question is, can Joe Biden stand up to it? And the answer is, come on. It's come on. It's come on. How can you stand up to something that doesn't exist? I mean, I mean, if if Joe Biden can't do anything about the giant spaghetti monster that lives inside my head, how is he ever going to deal with the non-existent threat of NATO <laughs> in Ukraine? Sort of insanity. The question is, can Joe Biden stand up to it? And the answer is, come on. Biden has always been more lobbyist than leader. He said, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Was he lobbying Russia when he said, I don't. Uh, um, I don't respect anybody's red lines. He's told Whatever. to say. Once it was the credit card companies in Delaware that wrote his scripts. Now it's the neocons at the State Department. It's the same idea. <laughs> Biden spoke today with Vladimir Putin by video call. And according to the White House, he informed uh -huh. the Russian leader that the United States plans to control Ukraine no matter what. Hey, uh, the, the United States. I'm sorry. He what now? Also, why are you showing the picture from Putin's office? And not from Biden's side of things. We are, you, you are broadcasting from the United States, right? This is, a, you're, you're on an American channel still? Did you just, I didn't, they didn't switch to RT all of a sudden, did they? Same idea. Biden spoke today with Vladimir Putin by video call. And according to the White House, he informed the Russian leader that the United States plans to control Ukraine no matter what. Really? Was that? I'm sorry. According to the White House, we told Putin we plan to, quote, control Ukraine no matter what. It's basically a colony now. We've taken it over. Fuck you, Vladimir Putin and your stupid little table. We are, we're going to roll in there. It's the 52nd state right after uh, Afghanistan, which we still are in but never left and will always be in but never go. Secretary of State and struggling pop musician Tony Blinken repeated that message. He threatened to send American troops there. Here's Tony. Okay, this is him saying, please have Tony Blinken saying we're going to control Ukraine no matter what. Blinken's in spoken. Russian. If Russia chooses to fail to de-escalate, if Russia chooses to move forward uh, with any plans uh, it may have developed uh, to uh, continue its military aggression or to aggress militarily uh, upon Ukraine, to violate Ukraine's uh, sovereignty, its independence, its territorial integrity, uh, we and our allies would be prepared to act. We would be prepared to act resolutely. <laughs> These such children. Ukraine... Such children? That's grown-up language, dick smear. Listen to this asshole. It's territorial integrity, that's the concern. That's what this- Hold on. Such children. Ukraine's territorial integrity, that's the concern. That's what this is really about, they're telling us. Because if there's one thing the Biden White House cares about, it's secure borders, at least in Eastern Europe, where borders are not racist. Ukraine- yeah, tell you what, asshole, when the Mexican government starts setting up snipers on the southern border and they shoot our Customs and Border Patrol people through the head weekly, then your analogy will, will lock into sanity. Borders must be defended. It would be immoral to open those borders to the world and allow, say, tens of thousands of unemployed Haitians to pour across. We can't. Allow that. In fact, we will send American troops. Well, uh, technically speaking, uh, the, the Haitian government has at no point attempted to undermine our government from the inside um, <laughs> and, and set up, again, lines of snipers. Ukraine to prevent that. 
Open borders are only permitted in Texas, Arizona, and California, and anywhere. Really, this we're, we're rolling into this about the border now. This whole Ukraine thing, like we're back into Tucker Carlson's ADD, where we're just going to drift into this bullshit. Potential Democratic voters might arrive uninvited from the third world, but Ukraine, no. Ukraine is a God-given right to territorial integrity, and American soldiers will die to defend that territorial integrity. Well, we're talking about an army coming across as opposed to economic migrants or people seeking asylum. It's, it's kind of different. I mean, I don't suppose you can tell the difference because anybody brown bad, I get it. That's our official position as a country. Now, according to CNN, we must stop these Russian attacks on the... By, by the way, uh, when Tony Blinken says we're going to act resolutely, largely they're talking about massive economic sanctions and the shutting down of the Nord Stream pipeline. One of the reasons why the Biden administration wanted the Nord Stream pipeline to go online is because of what I have been saying all along. That currently, without the pipeline, a lot of the oil and gas they bring into the country, it comes into Europe into Germany and other countries, comes in via trucks and boats. And those are harder to blow up and sink if you decide to put a sanction on something because it ends up killing drivers and sailors. Whereas if they have a pipeline and they're relying on that pipeline for everything they have economically, shutting off that pipeline is as easy as a single sanction that goes and has somebody turn a valve borders of Ukraine, because if we don't stop them, what we could have here is what CNN is calling a dire security situation. Now, that phrase apparently comes from Joe Biden's undersecretary of state, Toria Newland. <laughs> she should not be near foreign policy. Well, she is the undersecretary of state, so. According to CNN, gave a, quote, gloomy briefing to U.S. senators last night. Now, Toria Newland is strongly in favor of war with Russia. What's amazing is that is she, she's, she's strongly in favor of war with Russia. People are such children. Oh, war with the, I mean, come on. One. Anywhere is still listening to her. No serious person could take Victoria Newland seriously. She's a joke. Well, I, 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 know, I'm, I don't know if I can take her seriously or not, but I don't take your description of her or her position seriously because i'm 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 an adult human being with decent cognitive ability not only is she obviously unimpressive as a person ask anyone who knows her and she's not especially pro-american by the way she was one of unlike unlike you mr hey you guys are tormenting vlad architects of the disaster in iraq so why is toria newland still talking about foreign policy is the guy who designed chernobyl still building nuclear reactors I don't know. You'd have to ask Putin uh, right before he taps you on the top of the head. Sorry. Probably not. Only in Washington, where failure is assiduously rewarded, could someone like Victoria Nuland still wield power, which she absolutely does. Oh, is, uh, oh so that, is that your comment on the Trump presidency? It's scary when you think about it. Toria Newland is driving our Ukraine policy, which, of course, is being justified by our broader support for, quote, democracy. Now, keep that in Quote, democracy? What the fuck is that? Which, of course, is being justified by our broader support for, quote, democracy. Now, keep that in mind as you listen to this. This is the same, the same Toria Newland who was caught on tape several years ago scheming about how to end democracy in Ukraine. Here's Newland in a leaked audio recording plotting the overthrow of Ukraine's democratically elected president. Oh, oh, you mean the guy who fixed the election with the help of Paul Manafort arranged mobs in the street to be full of agent provocateurs so that they would have an excuse to fire on the fucking crowd? That guy? And this Newland rattles off a list of potential puppets to install in place of the democratically elected I president. I think Yats is the guy who's got the economic experience, the governing experience. He's, he's the guy, you know, what he needs is Cleach and Tani Book on the outside. He needs to be talking to them four times a week, you know. I, I, I just think Cleach going in, he's going to be at that level working for Yatsenyuk. It's just not going to work. Yeah, no, I think that's, you know? I think that's right. Okay. It's just not going to work. What about the voters of Ukraine who thought they were in? 
I, I'm sorry. Did you guys catch the part where uh, the the current president at the time gets murdered and they we install somebody? <laughs> Fuck. In democracy. No, nope, there's Tory Newland working to overthrow democracy. Keep in mind, if they'll do it there, they will do it here. <laughs> but yeah, so imagine if, I don't know what could happen like on January 6th of next year, for example, if she's not put in check. You're hearing the and same- Endless wars, motherfucker. Trump ran on getting out of Afghanistan and Biden got us out. Endless wars? Di All right. Can I just show you guys something that's coming up here in a second? Wait, there it is. This is the opening graphic for Sean Hannity. Endless wars. Jesus Christ, these guys. State Department goon who worked to organize a coup in Ukraine telling us we need to go to war with Russia to preserve democracy in Ukraine. Well, yeah, we actually have, uh, we, they had legitimate elections. This is before they had the legitimate elections when they actually were overrun with Russian corruption. And the guy that was in charge there was actually installed largely by Russia and was, uh, it was quite frankly, behind the annexation of the Crimean territories. So... <laughs> These people have no thank. By the way, thank you, Moon Moon Knight Shift, and uh, for the ad time, I appreciate that so much. And Shadow Woman and Star Gal and Tony from Ireland, thank you for gifting the subs on on Twitch. And we, uh, before I move forward, can I just please for a second? Can I just say thank you to something that I saw when I came on the air today, which was very surprising and lovely. Um, uh, Sophia, Irene, Star, Tony, M and Mark. Um, Thank you guys for becoming patrons. That happened while I was off the air. Um, maybe it, like it was like a coordinated attack. You guys were great, and I appreciate it. Must have been from watching something um, earlier, but I I just greatly appreciate. It, it might have been when I was on um, on Stuttering John or something like that. But I want to thank you guys. Why did I get blurry all of a sudden? Hmm. Anyways, shame. So the question is, what is this really about? Of course, it's not about democracy, for which they have zero no. respect. Well, in yeah, of course not. It's not it's because it's it's. And, and by the way, this is uh, um, Tucker Carlson is announcing his new show on Fox Nation. It's called Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, it's uh, he does the entire show from Putin's lap. It's a hangover from the lunatic Russia hoax that absorbed Washington for three years. Everything. Why the fuck would that have anything to do? That's ridiculous. Our problems with North Korea aren't because we don't like Trump. Vladimir Putin is bad, therefore let's have a war with him. A lot of people think- N No. <laughs> well, we're not going to do anything unless he invades Ukraine. And even then, it'll be sanctions and then material support. We're not sending soldiers to the fucking front in Ukraine. No one is suggesting that. But there's also a deeper cause here that's rarely noted. For years, Ukrainian interests have pumped millions of lobbying dollars into Washington, D.C. to change American foreign policy in the region. At one point, as you may have heard, they employed the... Oh, oh right, because they were trying to salvage their country from Russia. Because Russia, as a kleptocracy, was trying to take over. And the only big friends they had were NATO, the EU... And us, and America's obviously the big dog. And if they're, if we're on their side, the chances of them being stomped by Russia are thinner. Why wouldn't they side with us? Do you have the same problem with Taiwan? What about Hong Kong de democracy advocates? What? President's own son. Why does South Korea keep trying to get us to protect them from North Korea? I mean, shouldn't they be paying us protection money? Repeat their talking points. So tens of thousands of dollars a month to tell us that Russia is bad and we need to stand with Ukraine because democracy, even as we work to overthrow democracy in Ukraine. As, even as we work to overthrow democracy in Ukraine? When the fuck are we doing that? Because Yanukovych was a fucking murderer? So with that in mind, now that you know that, maybe you were not so surprised when Joe Biden concluded that Vladimir Putin doesn't possess a soul.
You said you know he doesn't have a soul. Well, I did say that to him, yes. And to and his response was, we understand one another. I wouldn't be a wise guy. I was alone with him in his office. That's how it came about. It was when President Bush had said, I've looked in his eyes and saw a soul. I said, look in your eyes, and I don't think you have a soul. And look back at me, he said, we understand each other. So you know Vladimir Putin. You think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. These people are children. Again, children. The uh, people are children. What the fuck? They, he's literally killed people. I, and here's a good idea, dickhead. Interview Navalny. You went over to Hungary. You were organizing interviews. You're catching shit from the State Department for talking to dictators behind everybody's back. Good Lord. Have you ever... I mean, honestly, if... If I was Trump, I'd be jealous. I <laughs> need to be leaders. Vladimir Putin's a killer. Presumably unlike every other head of state on earth through all human history. Hey, fuck you. This is the same shit Trump said. This exi like this is the, in that interview was like, well, are, we don't have killers. We're not killers. We haven't killed killers. There's a huge fucking difference. And the idea that there isn't or that our constitution or any of the stuff that we've done to protect the constitution or the existence of democracy in our country versus this kleptocratic asshole murdering people just to hold on to the resources in his own country while his own people fucking starve. That that's the same fucking thing that, you know, James Bond, the Blofeld, it's a coin flip. I mean, it's two sides of the same coin, aren't they? I mean, one of them's trying to maintain the freedom of an individual people, and the other one has a fucking laser weapon aimed at the moon to destroy the earth. But, you know, it's a thing. It's a, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. But honestly, that is not the relevant question. Vladimir Putin... PSC just called Trump a murderer, by the way. Soul? Who cares? We can leave that to his priest, assuming he has one. The only question that matters, the only question, is how does intervening in Ukraine help the core interests of the United States? And of course that... Well, that would uh, keep them from Russia from expanding into Ukraine, claiming all the energy resources there and the pathway into Europe through that way. So they would basically be the, the lifeline for all energy in Europe instead of just the Nord Stream, in which case they would, um, they would have a strategic advantage over you know, and, and leave them the ability to encroach on any of their border countries with no pushback from Europe, lest the lights go out. One question no one in Washington is asking. Watch the Pentagon's obedient little flack. A I man with so little dignity, he'll say whatever he's told to say. Brag about- Um, he's the spokesperson for the fucking Pentagon. How much military equipment we are now sending to Ukraine. And notice as you watch this tape that he never even thinks about explaining why we would be sending that military equipment. Well, um, we, we would be sending it so that they have the resources to fight back if they are invaded. One would think. P.S. Didn't you just interview Rittenhouse? <laughs> we have uh, provided... Uh, millions of dollars worth of lethal and non-lethal assistance uh, to Ukraine in just the last, you know, 10 months, 11 months. Nothing has changed about um, our commitment to making sure that Ukraine uh, has what it needs to defend itself. So say what you will about Donald Trump and his Twitter. Okay, cool. He's, uh, uh, he's a mess. His brain is failing. He's, he was always stupid and now he's dumb. Um, he, uh, Anybody downwind uh, from him has my pity. Um, he's no longer president, which is the nicest thing I can say about him. Um, he's a classic fuck up. And uh, he has no relationship with his children. And he describes his wife as solid. And one of her best traits is that they clean the sidewalks in the country her people are from. I'm not done. That's just put a... Out. Maybe you liked him. Maybe you were appalled by his personal style. But in retrospect, those are my those are my two options. How about I don't like him? I'm appalled by him as a human being. I don't think he has any style. I don't consider a giant red tie uh, that's long enough to cover whether your zipper is up or down style. <laughs> if there is one thing that Donald Trump deserves eternal credit for, 
is keeping Colonel. idiots like that in their box for four years. There were no pointless wars under Donald Trump. Uh, well, he ran on getting us out of Afghanistan. You considered it pointless. He considered it pointless. And yet we stayed the entire fucking time. You're mad. And you're mad at Biden for getting us out. It's not a small thing in recent American history. In fact, it's rarely happened over the past century. But through unwavering determination for which he is not. Well, it, for the record. Uh, pointless wars, just while we're talking about warfare. Uh, Donald Trump and presumably you and a lot of the folks at your network believe that COVID was not an accident, that it was a bioweapon engineered in a Wuhan lab and sent to the United States on purpose, along with the rest of the world, basically anti-Han the world, to kill everybody except Han Chinese throughout the world, whatever. And uh, that's your premise. And that when that attack happened, he played footsie with them and sold them a bunch of beef. In credit. If there's one thing he deserves credit for, it's this. Donald Trump pulled that off. He resisted again. Um, he didn't pull it off. Um, if you if you listen to what he said, he actually um, he actually I had um, a beat off. I had a beat off. Right. Which I understand why you would want I to like get that. Would. All right. And again, when members of Congress and guys from Raytheon, when all the interested parties pushed him to go to war here, there and everywhere, Donald Trump resisted that. Yeah, he just said, how about this? I'm not going to start new wars uh, um, except the ones that like in Syria and then we'll get out and then you, just anywhere you need to bomb a bunch of shit and we can get a bunch of money uh, from the taxpayer to re rebuild the stuff that I'll let you blow up and then uh, rebuild. Um, how about we just stay in Afghanistan the whole time I'm here and you guys can just make $300 billion a year. And in Washington, above all, they hated him for that. In the end, they is that, yeah, that, that's why they hated him. <laughs> Not because he was an incompetent fuck who did nothing of measure the entire time he was there. And even the wall he built sucks. It doesn't work. If you are going to make the case that the, the border is the worst it's ever been, and it was actually better before the wall was built then the wall has made it worse. him for it. As one witness put it during our impeachment inquiry, the United States aids Ukraine and her people so that we can fight Russia over there and we don't have to fight Russia here. Really? We're going to fight... Christ, man. What? Hold on. Really? We're going to... When did you turn into Dinesh D'Souza? Fight Russia over there, and we don't have to fight Russia here. Really? We're going to fight Russia here, are we, Adam Schiff? Adam Schiff, of course, a dumb person and a partisan Democrat. But what's... <laughs> I'm glad that we're getting some of this finely tuned political punditry, on, you know, an opinion on Tucker's show, as opposed to this kind of like broad brush, dopey flailing. Really? Like, who the fuck turns into a Muppet? in response to a question about whether or not we're going to fight war in the United States or elsewhere. I'm sorry. I, like, I feel like we're all going to get Tucker Brow. Interesting. And ought to make you sit up and pay attention. He suddenly part. I always sit up. I sit on a stool so that I don't, and it doesn't even have a backing. So it keeps my posture good during the show. It's something I learned early on. Republicans are making identical noises. Just this afternoon, Senator. Re they're, they're making identical noises. Like, Really? Like that kind of noise? Sure, Wicker of Mississippi, not a genius famously, but still a sitting Republican center, went on Fox News to say we may need to send American troops to Ukraine, and possibly because this isn't insane or anything, think about the use of nuclear weapons. An insane or anything? A what? And possibly because this isn't insane or anything, think about the- It's an insane- guys, it's an insane or anything. <laughs> <laughs> insane Ernie oh maybe that was the Muppet he was making the noise of insane Ernie hey Bert ah, really um insane or insane Ernie <laughs> American troops to Ukraine and possibly because this is an insane Ernie thing think about the use of nuclear yeah an insane Ernie thing guys it's an insane Ernie thing hey don't pick on Tucker He's the fill-in guy. This is his first time on the air. 
it shouldn't bother you that he's mispronounced or fabricated. <laughs> what did this count? Seven common words? Insanity. This is like, it's like insanity and enemy and, uh, uh, and Ernie and Tennessee Ernie Ford had a baby. <laughs> Fuck. Got that in our back pocket. Nuclear weapons. Well, no, they're far too big. We have them in silos. Roger Wicker, sitting U.S. Senator. No one in Washington laughed at Roger Wicker. This is so crazy that no one seems aware of how... It, excuse me, it's insane or me. You don't have to tell me. Crazy it is. They're all just sitting back and listening to Toria Newland tell them what we need to do. How much has this penetrated the psyche of Washington, D.C.? Well, here's a sad piece of tape. This is Joni Ernst, who's a totally affable, nice Republican, sort of reasonable in most things from the Midwest. Suddenly sounding like a... Yeah, well, she's got that Midwestern affability that makes her insane, Ernie. Bloodthirsty warmonger, sounding a lot like actually Adam Schiff when she talks about that dastardly Vladimir Putin. Hey. Uh, why? First of all, you don't have to agree that we're, we need to go to war to recognize that Putin's a fucking monster. I mean, it's not even about what he would do to us if he thought he could get away with it, or do Ukrainians, for that matter. It's what he does to his own fucking people all the time. But then, of course, Fox News presents the idea that a testing mandate and masking for another few months is tyranny. So the irony that they think that making a freely available vaccine mandatory for federal workers, for example, and that anybody who doesn't want to take it has to get uh, uh, either tested or they have to wear a mask, um, that that is tyranny. But Vladimir Putin is a sweetheart who's just being tormented by NATO. ...to say to Vladimir Putin that we are no longer going to allow you con to continue with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. We need you to know and understand that we will defend Ukraine. Uh, we will provide them assistance. He needs to make that very clear. <laughs> Putin is so bad, we're going to cut off natural gas to Western Europe. Western Europe? Ha ho ho ho! Um, for the record, um, the biggest loser is the state with the shortest dick. No, um, I like wood. I think so. I mean, that's deeper who and longer. Um, that's personal, and it's none of my business, uh, Tucker. That said, um, n now he's worried about Germany not getting enough natural gas. And that's his I'm worried about Germany face, in case you were wondering. Retaliation against him in December. We're going to freeze Germany and Luxembourg, and that's going to teach Vladimir Putin. Again, well, no, I mean, there would be other sources. And if they got in trouble, the European Union and the United States would make up for that loss because we would not allow them to be harmed. But we're also going to make it too expensive for them to buy it from Russia. They're going to have to find their energy someplace else, which would economically hurt Putin without killing any of his people. A, a mitigatory step that if you didn't want war would be a great step forward and still would, you know, have some teeth in pushing back against him murdering Ukrainians for no other reason than he wants to, an easy path without any kind of negotiation with the R Ukrainians to the fucking sea. You just saw there is a child who has no idea what she's talking about. But okay, Joni Ernst, a child. And you know me, I don't like to interrupt when they're fucking with their own. Uh, Joni Ernst is a child who does, doesn't know what she's talking about. So He's talking yeah. anyway. We will defend Ukraine, says Joni Ernst. Remember, this is a senator from Iowa. So what happens if we don't defend Ukraine, Joni Ernst? Well, kids... I don't know. They'll move across Kansas and... Moyne grew up to speak Russian? No one asked her that question. She's never thought about it for a moment. They're all just reading from the same talking points, from Adam Schiff to Roger Wicker to Joni Ernst. It turns out that foreign lobbying campaigns work pretty well. And that's why the Ukrainians paid for one in Washington. Hey, Sean. Yeah, apparently the ones, the Russian ones didn't work nearly as well as they, they wanted them to because uh, Trump lost. And uh, all they've got left is uh, Tucker Carlson to push back on Russia's behalf. I mean, it's basically this is his audition tape for RT 
when Fox kicks him to the curb. They've already pushed him to Fox Nation, where his dud show, uh, you know, his his three part uh, schlockumentary on on uh, <laughs> on the January sixth insurrection ends up. I mean, I, I wish I cared. I just don't care. It's not going to matter. He's going to get kicked off the air there eventually. Something's been dangling about there. He's been arguing about there's some, you know, someone's got emails posing as me, blah, 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 that he did earlier last year. Some of this shit is going to come home to roost eventually. And he's basically padding his nest elsewhere. And RT looks like a, a good paycheck. I think they air, somebody was saying they air the show on there. Um, Tucker Carlson's show airs on RT in Russia. Wouldn't surprise me at all. 